So cool, let's go ahead and get started, everyone. So thanks so much for being here. I know most of the folks here are very busy, but thanks uh, for being here. So um, my topic today, as you can see, it's about uh, technology, right? What are the latest trends being adopted and, uh, and what the restaurants are actually doing about it? I think it's no, it's no mystery that technology is extremely important in our daily lives. I think in the very recent social media update, we saw a lot of people getting frustrated. We saw reports of people unable to conduct their small businesses, right? A couple of years back, I think you all might recall that there was an underwater cable damage, and we actually lost internet connectivity for a quite a period of time. And that actually put a lot of organizations or teams, businesses, they made them helpless, right? Because there's so much dependency on the internet and also on the technology that is there. But now, come now, things are more advanced than before, right? And just like it impacts our social, our social lives and also our business, it's the same thing for restaurants, yeah? Restaurants now are so dependent on technology that they just can't live without it. They're pushing extremely deep into the digital space right now. Why? Any reasons why? Can someone tell me why? Simple. Because innovation is a new competitive advantage, right? It's not to say that the other areas, such as the quality, the ambience for restaurants is not important. They are. But it's just that technology simply gives the X factor to the restaurants, right? And also the fact that it's the generation of now. You know the millennials, right? People like you and I. I think I'm a millennial. But, you know, the younger generation, that's what restaurants are trying to appeal to. Right? And that's why the technology, when you have technology, it appeals to the youngsters. It appeals to the young generation. Not so much for our parents and so forth, but it's actually for the generation moving forward. Right? And that's the reason why there's such a strong adoption. It's not just only for that appeal, to, uh, to be appealing to the customers, but also to improve their efficiency and their businesses. And what I'm going to take you throughout these slides, through this presentation is, is what the major franchises in the US are adopting recently. And also we're gonna look at a few innovations that the experts believe is truly gonna be game changers for the restaurant industry. And my, my slides is gonna be mainly a lot of pictures and a lot of videos. It's gonna be very little content. And please again, feel free to, if you want, uh, if you have any clarifications, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and ask, okay? So I'm sure most of you who have been to the US are familiar with these brands, right? Uh, let me just give you a brief summary of what these brands are. So you should look at Denny's. Denny's. They are a table service diner style restaurant, right? They have over 2,600 restaurants across the US, South America, and also in Asia, like in the Philippines. That's how big Denny's is. Dunkin' Donuts is a very popular donut and a coffee place for most of the US. Again, they got over 12,000 restaurants, and that is worldwide. And Starbucks, all the coffee lovers out there, they are distributed 20, 26,000 centers, again, worldwide. Now, why I brought these brands up here is, one, they are big brands, and two, is because very recently, and by reason I'm referring to this last quarter, Q1, as well as a little bit of last year. Very recently, they adopted this technology to be ahead in the game to compete with their rivals. Any guesses what they adopted? Any guesses? Anything? Sorry? You're close, online ordering, but it was something related to online ordering. Sorry? They have, they have apps. They have apps. Can someone tell me what those are? Alexa. And what's the other one? Google Assistant, right? These guys adopted this just last quarter, all of these people. 
And what they actually found out was that their sales improved. I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but their sales improved dramatically as a result of this adoption. It's not to say that this is going to be long lasting, but they made a decision to invest in this technology to make a key difference to the way they engage with their customers. Right? And what I'm going to show you now is a clip of how Google Assistant is now being used by Dunkin' Donuts. So Dunkin' Donuts has exposed this service via the app and so forth to their premium customers. And what I want to show you is how effective it is, rather than me just talking about it. Hey, Google, talk to Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, Alyssa, welcome to Dunkin' Donuts. You have $62.57 available. Right now, I can help you Ray order your past orders. Ready to get started? Yes. To find the nearest Duncan location, I'll just need to get your street address from Google. Is that okay? Yes. Which location would you like to order from? 2402 Guadalupe Street. Your selected location is 2402 Guadalupe Street, Austin. Choose one of your favorites or recently ordered items. Let's go with the cold brew. Here's your order summary. Your total is $3.24. Ready to place the order? So this is actually happening right now with Dunkin' Donuts, right? So this is in fact a reality. And what I'm going to show you next is I'm going to play an audio clip. And what I would really like, again, for you guys to tell me what that is about. It's a very short audio clip. Just listen. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when... Um, Day, next night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like opera, like uh, five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You 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 can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. So what was that clip about? What was that audio clip about? Was it a conversation between two people? How many say yes? How many say no? What was that no? Why is it no? It's pretty much Google Assistant, right? That's the advancement in the voice technology. So this was actually revealed during the recent Google uh, developer conference, right? And what they have done with the voice is that they have made it as authentic as possible. They have also introduced the human way of communication saying, uh, hmm, all right. And it's just so realistic. So just imagine the experience a consumer or the user has, right? Just think of that. It just takes your experience to another level. So this logo is quite popular in Sri Lanka, or well, at least it's in Colombo, right? So McDonald's has been recognized as one of the leading fast food restaurants in the US, which drives technology in their operations, right? A recent comment from their CEO, and he said this, he asked himself, technology nowadays is truly disruptive. Am I going to be disrupted or am I going to be the disruptor? And based on that statement, they invested heavily this year into digital initiatives. And some of the recent things they did 
was they upgraded to digital menu boards. And they also have self-ordering kiosks in most of their locations. And very recently, again, they improved their delivery service by tying up with Uber Eats. Is anyone familiar with what Uber Eats is? Anyone here? So I guess everyone is familiar with Uber, right? As you know, you have an app. You're a few clicks away in order in a taxi, and you can actually trace who your driver is and where it is. What McDonald's did was you can now log into McDonald's, their applications using the Uber account, using an, an Uber account. You place the order with the Uber account, and you can track your delivery all the way from the restaurant to your destination. You know who your driver is, and you also know where it is at any given point. Again, bringing the users a step closer to their experience. And this has been proven very, uh, already proven very beneficial, because again, the millennials or the younger generation are extremely, well, quite enthusiastic about it. And they have found out that a lot of their customers have returned back to their brand. Pretty cool, yeah? The next video I'm going to show is a proposed restaurant concept by Alibaba. Well, the language is going to be in, uh, I think it's either Mandarin or Chinese, right? Sorry? OK. Right? But it's a concept which they are proposing. And to be honest, I think it's going to be a rea reality very soon. Shuan 小伙伴们再也不用抢菜单了。没有服务员的介绍，菜品的详细信息也已看贬值。选好了想吃的菜，下单前还可以一键备注辣不辣，要不要香菜这些个人口味。用餐过程中，如果需要加菜，可随时启
And this is already in the MIT university. And they have, in fact, rolled this out to a couple of other universities in the US as well. And they are now looking for approval from the, I think, the higher board so that they can, in fact, roll this out to fast food kind of restaurants. So let's just see how this works. So here again, they have an app. The user is able to select the menu. The difference is that the user is actually able to specify what ingredients he wants and the quantity. All that is punched in, and then everything else is done. You just have to stand and keep your board. Efficient, and they actually found out that it will reduce the wastage that is caused. Okay? Because normally with humans, you do make extra. But here, it's precise. And already this idea has also been tried out in Japan, in Japan and so forth. They've already tried this out in restaurants where it's making several ramen noodles per day by using uh, robots and so forth. This one, how many of you all have heard of the robot called Flippy? It was quite popular, I think, in the past few months. So they introduced a robot called Flippy. His main job was flipping the burgers. When it's hot, flip it. And when it's all ready, you give it to the next person. What you're seeing here is the visual, or is what the robot can see. It can actually recognize what a burger is, what is cooked, whether it's a cheeseburger, it can recognize if there's a hand, all through this heat map. Right? So based on the heat map, it knows when to flip. Do you know what happened to this afterwards? It was tried out in a restaurant called Cali something. They did try this out. It was very successful. But eventually, they had to fire the guy. It was the first time a robot got fired, I think. The reason was it was so efficient that the rest of the people could not keep up. So what they actually decided was to stop it and kind of optimize the rest of their workflows before they can put this guy back in business. The next innovation that, again, is being thought as a potential game changer is 3D printing. So we know, right, when we want to print, you select the item and go for it. But again, experts are saying is this is going to save a lot of space. What you would have is probably the images, what we normally see, if you go into Dynamo, you see lovely burgers and so forth, right? What they're saying is you just click on that image, and voila, it'll make it then and there. So this is yet, this is still in the, it's still at the infancy stages, but they have tried, out, tried this out in a restaurant in Barcelona. Let's have a look what they do. Scientists think there could come a day when all these cakes will be produced by a 3D printer using fresh ingredients. 
From a cake in the shape of a snowflake to a ravioli parcel, 3D food printing could become as routine as a microwave or blender. This one, named Fudini, created by a Barcelona-based startup, uses open capsules, which allow culinary whiz kids to add their own freshly prepared ingredients. Its reusable capsules are made of stainless steel, meaning they can be easily cleaned. This is the first version of 3D printing adapted to food. The device takes basic ingredients like flour or water and creates the finished product. If we want to go further and create things like those seen in the movie The Fifth Element or the Star Trek series, well, you tell the computer what you want without adding many ingredients. Well, that will take many more years. But we will get there. Food can be printed in many shapes and sizes, from as little as 1.5 millimeters high for crackers or several centimeters for a tartlet. Printing time depends on the ingredients, the recipe, and the complexity of the shape. All right. And this is the last part of the innovation, which is blockchain technology. So I'm no expert on this, right? But I'm sure these are terms which everyone has heard very recently, right? So blockchain, I mean, so the way it was explained was, just think of it as a ledger, right? We know when you say a ledger, it's all about financial transactions and you know, you're able to track what's going on. But what they're saying is a le this ledger, this electronic ledger, does not have to be restricted only to financial information. It can be any information you want, right? So right now, with that concept, McDonald's, sorry, not McDonald's, Walmart is actually using blockchain technology to track food or items from the source all the way to the store. And why? The main thing is it helps to ensure that the food quality is preserved. They can actually track and ensure that quality does not get compromised. And here are a few examples. I don't have any videos here, so I'll explain it to the best, the best I can. So let's just say you have a farm, right? And you as a restaurant. So let's just say you, the restaurant you have is a vegan restaurant. So as you know, for vegan foods, you have to be very particular about the ingredients you use, right? It has to be locally produced. It cannot be processed. And obviously, can't have any meats and so forth. So just imagine you're, you're marketing yourself with that brand, right? So you've got to ensure that there cannot be any slip-ups, right? So with this, the supplier actually gets into that contract with you, right? And you can actually have a full traceability until that item or the ingredients are shipped to your restaurant. Now, someone can say, okay, what about the supplier doesn't want to reveal the ingredients? Well, with blockchain technology, what they're saying is you can get into a smart contract where the transaction gets initiated only if they reveal what their ingredients are, and it's kept private, which is known only to the person receiving it. So in that way, it's a win of both things, right? You as the restaurant are happy that it's truly authentic, as well as for the supplier that you know your secret is not let out. So that's what they're looking at of using this blockchain technology here, kind of to mainly explore on those areas of ensuring food quality and safety, as well as to restaurant reviews. So what they're saying here is that Right now, anyone just can create any account and put any review. It's not authenticated or validated, right? Who it is or so forth. With this, it kind of reduces that big time. Because what they would say is for each reviewer, you are assigned something called a cryptocurrency token, which I think kind of validates that the person is truly authentic or so. I may be wrong, but that's the idea. So they feel that blockchain technology will go ahead well for the restaurants, and already restaurants are trying it out. And popular franchises like Walmart have already begun experiments on this. So if you look at it, this technology is bloody expensive. Yeah? For restaurants like McDonald's and the Walmarts, they could probably invest it because they had a financial cloud. And maybe even companies like Cisco and so forth. But what about the other restaurants out there, right? For the startups, what can they do? because they just can't afford not to focus on technology adoption because they will be left behind, right? But the thing is, the world is so competitive, these restaurants have these kind of startups to rely on. This is just a simple snapshot done by CBN Insights into all the kind of areas in a restaurant 
and all the kind of tech startups that provide this technology. So cake is not here, unfortunately, right? But this is just that subset. You can just imagine how many more technology providers out there to support the restaurant business. By the way, if you, if you didn't know, Cake Post is right now like in the top 20 in terms of uh, Post technologies. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's number 17, right? Toast is number three, right? But the thing is, restaurants have now access, right? Two people who can provide this technology and make sure that they are in the game. And with that, I'll wind up to this final message. We are indeed fortunate that we are involved in a corporate like Cisco. As Hasita mentioned in his first presentation, Cisco is a multi-billion dollar company, right? There is so much of investment. But the thing is, we can't take it for granted, right? Why? Because in addition to Cisco, you have other companies called performance food groups, and also you have US Foods. But very recently, Amazon entered the business. They acquired Whole Foods. And that, personally, I find that worrying. Why? You know Amazon. They introduced technologies like Alexa, which are now being adopted. And they have the technology back in. I'm sure they have heavy research going on. So just imagine Amazon gets it right. We are going to have serious competition in trying to be, trying to compete with them. And I'll just tell you how strong Amazon is, right? Or the fear Amazon is causing. When I was in my last company, peers in Education, uh, the CTO there visited Sri Lanka to see the center. You know, someone asked him, Albert, what do you, who, do you, who is our biggest competitor? You know what he said? So by the way, peers in Education is an online education sol solutions provider. He said, my, my fear is not the McGraw Hill or the Penguin books and so forth. My fear is Amazon. If today Amazon or Google enters, it's going to be very difficult to keep up because of the technology strength that they have. So we just can't take it easy, guys, right? Every opportunity we have, we need to be able to innovate and improve the way we do things simply because the competition is high out there. And as, is, as I said, Cake Boss is not really in the top five. So there's a lot more to be done. So with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.